I get up early. I've, I've come to really love the morning because ideas flow in a, in a kind of a fresh and uh, easy way for me. Um, trying to find a new idea at four in the afternoon, I think for anybody is a nightmare. I'm a stage director, but I'm also a conductor. I'm a pianist, I'm a vocal coach. I still perform at the piano with singers. I have to keep my chops up. Yeah. When I first arrived at Opera McGill, everything was done by paper. The fifth floor board, I think a lot of, of the older students will remember that. It became very obvious that the students were looking at Facebook, they were looking at social media, they were on their phones. And the way to communicate with them was purely electronic. Patrick's Opera blog is something I started back about six or seven years ago. And it developed into a way of communicating ideas with uh, current students and maybe prospective students. Training for opera singers has changed. They, of course, still are working on their voice, they're still working on their technique, they're working on their languages. We try to focus also on acting and body movement. Opera is never about the day nothing happened. <laughs> it's always about the day something really happens. Salut, hello, how are you? Design meetings are my favorite meetings here at Miguel. And I was really lucky that I was introduced to Vincent Lefebvre. And at the end of the season, it will be almost 60 operas that we have designed together. His wife, Jeanette Crenier, is our costume designer. She is a genius. Whenever I doubt myself artistically, they're, they're sort of the first people I, 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 I talk to. If we didn't have Serge, I don't know how things might happen. Um, he is officially our lighting designer, but he's basically the technical designer, the production designer, the production stage manager. So this team grew a few years ago to include this brilliant makeup artist, Florence Carnet. She creates these amazing displays on people's faces. It's, it's a team effort. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I bring in directors who direct very differently from me. I bring in conductors who have different musical approaches than I do. You're going to learn about opera just from me? I don't think so. Hold there, right there, Augie. Part of the excitement of the last couple of years has been all the webcasts we've been doing in high definition. We have this amazing person named George Massenberg. He's really taken this notion of just sort of broadcasting an opera and turned it into multi-camera, live editing. We have Grammy award-winning sound uh, engineers who are miking the students for these webcasts. Shall we sing it all along together? It was his first meeting, right? It was his first meeting at Opera McGill. I was his, the first class. Nobody knew who he was. He was from America. He had so much knowledge that he could really help us with preparing for auditions, preparing the right repertoire. I call myself a, a disciple of Patrick's because I followed him. He did his summer program at Brevard and I went there for three summers. I was going back for my master's and uh, I got the chance to sing a production, Suor Angelica. And uh, Patrick Hansen is fantastic! Uh, what a great director! Uh, and his wife Elizabeth Koch, fantastic! While he has been here, we've had amazing students. I mean, two hugely uh, successful baritones, bass baritones, Philippe Sly and Gordon Bintner. We had an amazing faculty that is McGill at our disposal to create these, really, these professional quality productions. It wasn't such a big step then, taking the step out of McGill into the professional world. It's prepared me for everything I've done, truly. Our dean at the time, Don McLean, said he, he wanted to see McGill graduates back on the stages of uh, the COC and Vancouver Opera and L'Opera de Montréal and in those young artist programs. And so that's what we did. <laughs> opera McGill is one of the largest opera programs here in Canada. We do more opera with orchestra than any other opera program does. So we do a Baroque opera every year. We do it with period tuning and we do it with period instrumentation. And you can really only find that, you know, at Yale. They called me the morning of closing night of Cozy, and they said, you know, I think you should go on tonight and, and conduct something. And I thought, this is great. My time at McGill meant so much to me.
Through my experience at Opera McGill, I sort of had enough rudimentary knowledge to start my own company, Opera 5. I am actually the first stage directing Adler fellow, and I feel like that probably is a testament to Opera McGill's training. The opera world right now, I mean, there's, there's so much that's going on experimentally, and I think that McGill doesn't shy away from that. We were doing a 60s version of Cosi Fan Tutte. Uh, it, was, it was a bit racy. I had a hot pink bra that at some point during one of my arias I had to change my costume and stand there and then get dressed again. That was, that was a first. There was a production of Agrippina. I came on as a servant boy type thing. I, I did strip down to my underwear and all that. I was probably doing push-ups off stage before <laughs> to prepare for that. Then Agrippina, Dave Tenervia, I thought to myself during this dream sequence, what could we add to this? And I said to Jeanette, you know, maybe you know you could think of something like a disco ball on his head and maybe, I don't know, a sequin dress. And the next thing I knew, at the dress rehearsal, there he was. Serge lit the disco ball up. There was light everywhere in the in the room. I got very emotional actually, because I, I was I thought, you know, where else can you get this? So it was a very fulfilling moment. We were doing a production of Imeneo. There was this big plastic container on stage. It went poof, and the whole water just splashed down on the floor and started rushing towards the pit. I ran down the, like, down the steps in front of the water, um, jumped and lay down. And the next thing I knew, Patrick was beside me also lying down, and we sort of created like human sandbags. Patrick put me on stage in one production of Agrippina. I played, I came out in a kind of cocktail outfit and played, it was as if she was a pop star, Papayan. I played the aria as her hired help in their penthouse suite. I leave off of McGill taught me to be professional, to put your best foot forward, and to never say no. I did my first Don at, at McGill, and now I have the great opportunity to sing Don Giovanni at Opera de Morial. And so cu coming back to the score, coming back to this incredible piece, I have so much that was ingrained in my mind from the, the fond memories of, of creating it for the first time at McGill. <laughs> here at Opera McGill, it typically takes about 100 hours to stage an opera. They can be here till 10 o'clock at night, and then they've got an 8.30 in the morning classroom. The production is not the point. And for so many other programs, it's the production that's the point. This is all student focused, it's student based. I pick the shows based on the students I have and the students I think will be coming. When we create opera, it's in a process that allows them to explore. It's a process that allows them to fail. We can go from high Baroque tizé to updated Rodelinda to uh, a real Roman kind of Rape of Lucretia with a good twist to, um, to a period La Boheme. <laughs> with full chorus and 100 people on stage, plus a dog. We can really offer the students a, a wide variety of experiences and our audiences as well. Okay, that was good. That was long. And I think that's probably the biggest reason why Opera McGill is what it is.